Okay, this is your stat set, Sensei, Mr. Spensei, looking at scenario two for our quiz. Scenario two was based on um, a um, regression problem. So a study is made relating power and cold cranking amps of auto batteries as a function of price and dollars. Data from a random sample of batteries generates the following computer output. Okay, the first thing I look for is I go down here and I go, oh, price. That tells me my X value right there. And this is my slope. And since that says constant, that's my Y intercept. My degrees of freedom right here is 11. That must have meant my sample size because degrees of freedom is N minus two is 11 minus two, excuse me, 11 equals N minus two. So my sample size, if they ask, is about 13. All right. so. Write the equation of the fitted regression line to find any variables. Well, the easy way to do it is say power, make sure it has a hat on it, equals 410.997 plus 5.9, et cetera, price. If I do that, then I've defined my variables. Otherwise, y hat equals this. Make sure that that's a hat. And Y is a battery power in amps. X is the price in of the battery in samples. Of the, um, is the bat is the price of the battery in dollars. The next thing says identify and define the meaning of the slope. And by the way, those values, I should say, came right here: four ten and five point five. Well, this is my slope, and we identified it. The slope of the regression line is five point five dollars. Okay, for where one amp. So for every one amp increase in power, there is an expected increase of $5.53 in price of the battery. Please write the fraction and label it before you define it. It'll help you immensely. The next thing says, using the computer printout, calculate and interpret the standard deviation of the residuals in the context of the study. Well, basically I take the sum of the squares, this value divided by the residual degrees of freedom, which gives me this. Then I take the square root of that. And that is what I show right here, all right? That is what I'm showing right here. And I end up getting 74.287 when I take the square root of that. So the standard deviation of the residuals is 748 and gives us the amount of variation we can expect in battery price from the regression line for a given amount of amps. So basically how much variation from what we predict, because the regression line is our prediction line. So how much variation do we predict, for, or how much variation from what we predicted? All right, and so for a given amount of amps, we expect 74.28 uh, as our amount of variation. Okay, the next question. Identify and interpret the value of the coefficient of determination in the context of the problem. Well, first off, the coefficient of determination is your R squared. So, and they always will put an R squared adjusted. You can ignore that. We just want the R squared, which is 68.3. So, R squared, 0.683, the coefficient Coefficient of determination is 0 0.683. 68.3% of the variation in battery price can be explained by changes in the amount of power. So variation in Y can be explained by X. Calculate and uh, interpret the correlation coefficient. Well, that's just R, and R equals the square root of R squared. So the square root of 0.683 82.64. Now I need to check one other thing, my slope. Well, in this case, my slope is positive, so I'm good to go. If it had been negative, then I would have a negative relationship. So there is a strong, and there's a word missing, I gotta have this word, positive. If you don't have direction, you're gonna lose half credit. There's a strong positive linear relationship between battery price and battery power. So please make sure that you have uh, the direction listed. Otherwise, you're going to go from full credit to partial. Part F, identify 
and interpret the standard error of the slope. Well, the standard error of the slope is going to be always going to be on the, the X line. So here's our X line. And it's always going to say either standard error or it could say standard deviation. Standard error is more correct, but it could say standard deviation. In this case, it's 1.135. So the standard error of the slope was 1.135. Because the slope is estimated from a sample, other samples are likely to have different slopes. So if we end up with a slope of this was our real, this is what came from our, uh, our sample. Other samples could vary. How much can they vary? Well, the standard error quantifies the amount of variation. And in this case, 1.135 is what we expect to vary. The next thing, is there statistically convincing evidence there exists a linear relationship between the response and explanatory variable? All right, we've previously defined X and Y, otherwise I'd have to do that, but I've done that previously. So there's not a linear relationship between battery price and battery power. There is a linear relationship between battery price and battery power, all right? And so we have beta one equals zero, which means it's a horizontal line, no linear relationship. Beta one does not equal zero, means it's something other than a horizontal line. Beta one is a true population slope for the relationship between battery price and power. Our formula, B over SB. Well, B is the sample slope over the standard error of the slope. Those values came directly off the table, 5.5 and 1.135. When I get that, I get a T statistic of 4.872. So, because our null is not equal, I mean, our alternative is a not equal to, we need to have a two times. So I'm gonna go um, turn my calculator on and then second VARS, TCDF, lower bound 4.872, upper bound 99999. This is my lower bound because it's positive. If it had been negative, it would have been my upper bound. My degrees of freedom, that came straight off of this. It's really 13 minus two, but 13 minus two is 11, and they actually gave that to me. And I end up getting a very small, but I multiply that times two, and I get 0 0.0049, which is about 0 0.005. There should be an extra zero. Our p-value is 0 .0, I'm gonna write that, 0 0.0005, we reject a null. There's sufficient evidence at alpha equal 0 0.05 to suggest that there's a linear relationship between battery price and the power of the battery. So the slope of the line is not zero. There exists a linear relationship between battery power and price. Great. Next thing, create a 93% confidence interval for the slope. Well, our slope is our sample slope, plus or minus our T star times our standard error. Once again, slope and standard error came right off the table. Slope and standard error right there. But I need my T star. So I get that by going second bars. Pass it up, inverse T, parenthesis, one minus 0.93, close parenthesis, divided by two. Degrees of freedom, 13 minus two, or just plain old, oops, that's not gonna work. Second VARS, second, second VARS, TCDF. Sorry, second VARS, inverse T, there we go. Parenthesis, one minus 0.93, close parenthesis, divided by two. Degrees of freedom is 11. And we get a T star of about two, all right? Then I'm gonna to have to solve this by algebra. I'm gonna to have to go 5.57 plus this times 1.35. Gotta give me my upper value, 5.529 minus this times that will give me my lower value. So this is my interval. And we are 93% confident that the true population slope 
where the relationship between battery power and battery price lies within this interval. They did not ask for this, but you should do it anyway. In repeated sampling, we expect that this method will capture the true population slope for the relationship between battery power and battery price 93% of the time. All right, thank you for watching. I uh, hope this helped. See you on the next one.